In this video, we're going to be walking through a feature called parameters, which lets you pass in val values dynamically into an existing test. You can see here that this test has no parameters currently defined. In this video, we're going to walk through how you would actually define that and when you would actually want to use parameters in your tests. So first, let's look at the video of this test running so you can see exactly what it's doing. In this test, we're testing the project management tool linear by logging into a linear account waiting for the email to arrive with a link to log in, searching for an existing issue, and then validating that issue has the proper attributes, in this case, the issue name. Now, if you think about a test like this, where you're logging in, searching for something and validating some aspects of it, one thing that you might want to parameterize is who you're actually logging in as. So maybe you wanna validate that certain roles can access this issue and view it. So that would be something that we'd make want to make a parameter, the username and the password. Another thing we might want to parameterize is what issues we pass in. So maybe we want to search for uh, an issue ID which is different than the one that I recorded against. Maybe that issue ID has different attributes like a different name uh, that's been associated with it or other things that we want to validate. And so instead of creating duplicate tests for these different kinds of issues, different kinds of uh, users that you're logging in as, you can parameterize the test so that you can just pass those values in dynamically. So let's start with the username. So this is step seven here. Uh, this is my test user. So to create the parameter out of this, I'm going to highlight this value and click replace with variable or parameter. You'll notice variables all throughout reflect as well. They're similar to parameters, but the main difference is that variables establish values within the test itself that they can be used in later steps. So an example of that might be um, you are grabbing the price of a particular product and then you wanna assert against that price whatever it is later on in the workflow. Uh, that product price that you grab could be assigned to a variable. All right, so now that we've talked about the distinction between variables and parameters, let's make this a parameter. So we're gonna click this and to make it a parameter, we're just going to give it a unique name, which I'll call this username. And so you'll see this option here to add a new parameter username. And we'll go ahead and save that. And you can see that this now has one parameter, whereas before it had none. And the default value is what was uh, the literal value before I made it a parameter, which is my test user. If I were to go to run this test, you can see that the parameter is displayed here and I can actually modify it if I wanted to, uh, which is how we could do one-off runs of a test that has a parameter. You can also make this data-driven. So you could take this test and run it n number of times with each different run being for a different user role that you're testing. So this is probably the simplest example of parameters, but let's go a little bit more complex here by making the actual value that we're searching for dynamic. So this is the issue ID. So we're gonna do the same thing here and replace this with a parameter that we'll call issue ID. Now, this actually appears in multiple uh, subsequent steps. So to make sure that this test uh, actually works with different issue IDs, we need to update those steps. So here, what we're gonna do, this text here contains the issue ID. We're gonna highlight the issue ID and say that it must match the existing parameter issue ID, which is right here. This text right here is the title of the issue. And so we'll highlight this and we'll make this a new value called um, issue title. So we'll say assign a variable and we'll call this, uh, actually what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, match against an existing variable called issue title. And the rest of this could change. So we're just going to ignore it. So we're going to say ignore selection. All right. So we could also do a validation of the page title. Uh, if we wanted to. So we could say that this portion here must match against the issue ID. This portion here must match against the issue title. So match against existing parameter, issue title. And then the final thing we'll need to change is this is actually an assertion on the issue title. So we'll highlight everything and we'll say match against issue title. All right, so we'll go ahead and save that. And now you'll see that there's actually three parameters here, the username, the issue ID, and the issue title. So let's actually go ahead and uh, change this. So when we go and run it, it's uh, going to be 
testing against a different issue. So here I'm going to test against a, an issue called dem uh, 93, and the issue title is test. Let's go ahead and run that. And now this is going to be running with a totally different issue ID and issue title, but the parameters of the test itself hasn't changed. If we wanted to have a different default value, we could change it here. You can also make the value here be blank. So if we save it with a blank value, when you go to run it, you actually need to define the issue ID for it to run. So this is a way uh, to basically tell other users that, hey, you need to provide this value in order for this test to work. It isn't something that would normally have a default value. But we'll switch this over to dem one And if we view this test that ran, we'll see that it actually did search for that uh, dem93 and validated that the title is test. You can see that right here. All right, so final thing to show you here is how parameters work with segments. So um, the concept of logging in, the concept of searching for an issue, that might be something that you want to do in a bunch of different tests. Certainly with login, maybe most of your tests require that you log in before you can do anything. So we're going to turn those into reasonable test steps, which we call segments. Uh, this is covered in more detail in a previous video, but just to cover it very briefly, segments are just a set of uh, test steps that can be reused across tests. So we're going to bulk select these steps here and call this a new segment called, um, we'll call this linear login. And we will choose the folder linear for this. So add this as a segment. And now you can see that this section here has uh, is in this, its own little area, which is collapsible. The search functionality can also be in its own segment. So we'll just go ahead and choose uh, the options to search for an issue and hit enter to uh, submit it. And we'll call that search for issue. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that this actually populates parameters if uh, a parameter appears in the segment that we're creating, uh, that would actually become a parameter of this segment. And so uh, I'll also add this to the folder here. And so if we go ahead and view the segments that we created, you'll see that the parameters are created on the segment. So what's really interesting about this is that you can build these building blocks that each have their own uh, inputs and validations that can be passed dynamically, either when you run the test or passed by some earlier step in the test. So to demonstrate that, let's actually create a test here. And we're going to create a test, uh, testing linear. And we'll call this create issue. And we're going to start by adding a segment to it the segment we just created, which uh, one of them that we just created, which is the login segment. And you can see here that this shows the parameter, which we could override if we wanted to. So when I click begin recording here, those steps are already going to be part of the test. And you'll notice that um, it automatically runs those steps. And you can see that the, seg uh, the segment references the parameter right here. Um, now segments can be anywhere in the test. It doesn't have to be in the beginning. So for our, my create issue test, I'm going to go ahead and create the issue and call this test with test description. And we'll add a validation to grab the new uh, test ID and test name. And to make this uh, dynamic again, we'll call these uh, the same value. We'll use the same naming convention we used earlier. So we'll call this um, uh, we'll we'll call this uh, issue ID, and we'll call this issue name. And now we will add our segment to actually um, search for this issue. And here what you'll notice is that the issue ID, which I've already extracted into a value, is already referenced here. So what's really cool about this is that you can now um, 
basically auto populate values when you insert a segment. So when this runs here, it's going to search for that value that I've already established. So as you can see with uh, this video, uh, parameters are a very powerful tool for you to use when you're constructing complex test suites. And we encourage you to use these values, uh, use parameters when there are situations where you want to pass values dynamically uh, that would otherwise require you to create duplicate tests or create more complex setups. Thank you for watching.